Today we are back with some great tutorials shared recently by the Blender community. As usual, these are worth watching because I personally have found these very useful. You will learn how to make satisfying animations, manga style renders, lighting techniques and more. Before we jump into the topic, if you want to learn how to create large scale fantasy cities in Blender, you can take a look at this course. You will be using Blender in addition to a variety of different programs like Substance Painter for texturing and After Effects for compositing. Your instructor Yuta Tasaki is an environment artist from Japan who mainly works on movies, games and Netflix content and specializes in sci-fi and fantasy. In this 14 hour course, you will see all the stages of creating a highly detailed cityscape scene. First, you will see how you can get inspired by looking up some reference images to visualize your work. Next, you will jump to Blender and block out your city. After getting the scale of the scene and all the key elements of the environment, you will start modeling everything. The UV unwrapping is done using Ryzen UV and you're gonna do this for efficiency. After that, you will texture your models in Substance Painter and composite everything in After Effects. By the end of this training, you will have all the knowledge you will need of creating large scale scenes. The thing is, the instructor is Japanese, so he will be speaking in his native language, but there will be English subtitles. If you are interested in this training, you will find the necessary links in the description. First of all, we're gonna talk about the tutorial Decoded uploaded, in which he will be breaking down his process on how to create an underwater miniature world in Blender. The animation starts with a submerged office cubicle underwater, and you zoom out to reveal the full miniature model. First, you will see how you can achieve the underwater effect by simulating a hazy ocean water look using a mist pass in the compositor. Next, you will model the scene elements, incorporate 3D scans, and model barnacles and seaweed. Next, you will see how to animate the shark and the fish, in addition to how to build the skyscraper and finally destroy it. This one here is the first video of a series about cinematography and photorealism released by Polyfjord. In this video, he will create a basic scene featuring a character model from Mixamo and a studio backdrop as a background. From there, he will share with you two good strategies for lighting your scene, explaining after that his favorite lighting setup, along with a great breakdown explaining some important lighting concepts such as outside versus inside lighting, etc. In this tutorial, Simon shared the whole process of making his manga style character flying animation. You will start by downloading the character and the animation from Mixamo. Then, procedurally model and animate the cape using the displacement modifier. After that, he will show you how to create the manga style shader and apply it to both the character and the cape. You will also achieve the sense of speed or the speed effect by adding action lines. Then, you will animate the camera using a very useful technique which is animated in by hand using auto keying and then smoothing the F cores for a nice result to finally render everything. Also, Donkey3D uploaded two tutorials on how to achieve these pleasing animations in Blender. Both of them include a sphere rotating on itself with another layer of objects on top of that. The first looping animation is made using a combination of boolean and constraints. You will first model the sphere and then carve it using the boolean modifier. Next, you will create a curve modifier and animate the small sphere along the curve path. Finally, you will apply some materials and set up the backdrop and then lighting. The second one is an alien artifact, something with another planet with webs hovering over its surface. You will first create a weird pattern through a combination of an ecosphere, a triangle, and the new dual mesh node. Next, you will create the materials and light your scene. In the end, you will end up with this extraterrestrial looking object that feels like it has a mind of its own. In this next tutorial, you will learn how to set up a very useful system that you would want to use in every future project. It is an easy and clean autofocus camera setup by CG Boost, including how to make lighting setup that allows you to follow the rotation of the camera automatically. Basically, you will learn first how to create an autofocus setup by applying the shrink wrap modifier to empty objects and assigning it as the focus object for the camera. If your target object is composed of multiple meshes, you will face a problem with the shrink wrap modifier, as it can accept only one mesh object as a target. That's why you will learn how to use geometry nodes to merge objects without joining everything together. Then, you will set up three-point lighting setup 
and using the copy rotation constraint for the empty object that has the lights appended to it. And the lighting setup will stay always directed to the camera view angle. And in this tutorial, you will make use of the new light group passes that come with Blender 3.2 Alpha build and learn how to achieve this compositing technique that will save you a lot of time in your projects. After adding the three point lighting setup and assigning them to the light passes, you will jump to the compositing tab where Halifax will guide you through how you can recreate this node setup starting with a single render image to finally be able to have control of lighting in real time. With this light pass system, you can change the colors, the intensity, or even animate the light within seconds without having to render everything from the 3D viewport. Simon 3D also dropped few tutorials recently. In this one here, you can learn how to create this anime style explosion smoke following the vibes of the previous tutorial. It will teach you how you can reproduce the same effect using geometry nodes, modifiers, and of course shading nodes for the stylized material. And in the other one, you will learn how to create a very cool fire shader material that I believe you can easily apply to any object you want. This is the case to give it that sort of magic effect. You will play with the glass shader, volumes, along with the combination of node textures to get the nice fire effect in cycles. Kaizen Tutorials also uploaded two awesome geometry nodes tutorials in Blender 3.1, teaching you how to recreate this very cool effect. In this one, you will learn how to make an audio visualizer animation effect. First, by adding an animated displacement in your plane geometry to give it that heavy look and then converting your mesh into points using the instance point node. After importing the song, you will use Big Sound F Curve so that you can use it to control the intensity of the animation and the overall look of each point along with creating a nice fall off effect. Finally, you will add a material, tweak the render settings and you are done. While in the second geometry node tutorial, you will learn how to create easily this light beam effect using a new raycast node. Since everything is procedural, in the end, you will be able to apply this effect to any target object. You will first create and animate the light beam curves and customize their scale, and then apply the raycast node that will snap the rays on the target model, along with some useful tips for optimizing the performance. In addition to mirroring the points, I'm finally setting up the scene and render settings for rendering the final result. Also, in this simple tutorial, you will learn about a lighting technique for relighting a live action shot using Blender. Brad from Light Architect will share with you some useful tips while working on his project. He started by roughly recreating a general geometry of the environment and making sure that everything is lined up with the footage. After that, he added the lights needed for his scene, disabled the environment lighting, rendered the scene, and finally jumped to the most important part, which is compositing. In the compositing part, he explains the different blend modes you can use in different situations and start blending his CG lights along with throwing several tips that will truly help you in your personal projects. I hope you found these tutorials useful. If you do, you can find the necessary links in the description. Also, you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.